salutations. Welcome to the 2016 edition of the Powered by Ice Cream Year End Awards. I don't want to waste any of your time. I don't want to beat around the bush. I don't want to J your D's. I just want to get into this, all right? So without further ado, let's get into our first award category, shall we? In a year where both Jenny's and Bluebell returned from certain doom, the stage was set in 2016 for some great comeback stories. Unfortunately, those two brands came back with all the fury of a wet fart. Thankfully, Blue Bunny stepped up, rebranded themselves, redesigned their packaging, and improved their recipes. With standout flavors like PB Party, Cheerific Cheesecake, and of course, my favorite, Vanilla Cupcake, they quickly became the best brand for your money, especially in stores like Walmart or Target. haagen and Talenti both put up stinker years in 2016, but nobody mailed it in quite as hard as Ben & Jerry's. Between the uninspired limited batch options, the lackluster core series, and the utterly awful non-dairy lineup, this was as bad a year as I can remember for Ben & Jerry's. The same company that used to be a creative powerhouse wowed us with such great and unique concepts as Empowerment and Chocolate Cherry Garcia? Hopefully next year, Ben & Jerry focused less on their politics and more on their ice cream. In a year where most of the big dogs were half-assing it, leave it up to a 17-year-old girl to pick up the slack and put all the other ice cream companies on notice. Grace and Little G came out swinging and quickly staked their claim as the best new ice cream company in 2016. With a lineup of fun flavors and over-the-top mix-ins, it makes for great Instagram food porn, but it tastes just as good as it looks. No matter what your preference is, there will be a flavor in Little G's lineup that will be sure to give you ice cream boners for days. Now this was a tough one. Ample Hills had another great year and Little G really came on strong late, but nobody was as consistent as Salt and Straw. Sure, some months got a little too frou-frou and hipster for me, but I mean, just look at all the flavors they pumped out this year. Coconut with Petunia Salted Caramel Bars, my favorite non-dairy ice cream ever. Salted Caramel Cupcake, Pots of Gold and Rainbows, Oregon Rocky Road, Sweet Potato Casserole, Peanut Butter and Jelly, and of course, my favorite salt and straw flavor of the year, Cenotopia. Even with a couple of uh, iffy months, salt and straw was pretty much on fire for the majority of 2016. Ben and Jerry's non-dairy fudge brownie. What can I say about this ice cream that hasn't already been said about frozen sewage? Ben and Jerry had years to research, develop, and test their dairy-free ice creams. And despite the fact that it is damn near common knowledge that coconut and cashew milk ice cream make for the best non-dairy products, they still decided to go with almond milk. All four of the non-dairy flavors from Ben & Jerry's are bad, but the fudge brownie is especially terrible. I would rather eat some flavors of Halo Top before I ever tortured myself with a pint of the fudge brownie ever again. Yes, it is that bad. Number five is Working Cow Creamery's Crazy Cake. Working Cow Creamery is based out of Florida. They're relatively unknown and super underrated, but man, they make the best birthday cake ice cream I've ever had. Nobody else even comes close. Number four, salt and straws, peanut butter and jelly. I had a couple ice cream related wishes come true in 2016 and this was one of them. Finally, somebody got a peanut butter and jelly ice cream right. Number three, Little G's pecan pie. Speaking of wishes, this is my second wish that got granted. I finally got what I've always wanted out of pecan pie ice cream. Grace took pecan pie filling, threw it on top of some vanilla bean, mixed it all together, and made one of my favorite ice creams of the year. Number two is Salt and Straw's Cenotopia. If you guys missed out on this flavor, my words can't possibly do it justice. Imagine, if you will, all the best parts of a cinnamon roll, and then put that into an ice cream. It was a transcendent experience. I pray to the ice cream gods that Salt and Straw brings that one back next year. 
And number one, my favorite flavor of 2016 was Ample Hills. It came from Gawas. The best dark chocolate base I've ever had. Fudgy, chewy brownies, crack cookies, white chocolate pearls. It's, it's, it's one of my top three ice creams of all time. Not just this year, of all time. Sadly, this flavor isn't offered on Ample Hill's website anymore, but it is still available at their Gowanus location. So if you find yourself in Brooklyn, head on down to that shop and make sure it came from Gowanus is the first flavor you scoop. Well, that wraps it up. 2016 is coming to a close, and hopefully 2017 brings us just as many, if not more, awesome ice cream flavors. Once again, I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and uh, one more thing. Hey. Eat ice cream. Every day.